So, hello, come back to another episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. Today is a bit of a different day. Um, yesterday, I might have gotten an email regarding certain uh, copyright issues that I might have to deal with now. Um, and therefore, we're going to do something different today. We're not going to watch a video. Um, I think, I don't know, I think it is complicated. I mean, there are you know reaction videos and they're also stated as reaction videos which is basically kind of i think also the form that i'm um kind of in at this point of time but i don't know what rules are when it comes to podcasts since i am using the audio of the video and then upload it as a podcast so that you know people sometimes do not have the time to uh, watch a fucking 30 minute video and or it's just more convenient and better for them um in terms of learning, in terms of whatever the fuck. I don't know. But there we are. We're going through another book summary, kind of back to the roots. I am probably gonna go for uh, bottom to top because I, I sometimes have a feeling, well, actually quite often have a feeling that it is better. There we go. Um, I don't yet know how to deal with that shit now, but I think yeah, that works quite well. This, by the way, is by Derek Sivers. It is not something I have written. It is Derek Sivers book notes page that is available to everyone and I'm using it as a source. Relationship Handbook by George Pransky. Pransky. He read it 16th of August 2022 and it was rated a 10 out of 10. So, it makes it a really good book since Derek went through so many books. I would assume and I would say that when he's rating something a 10 out of 10 or in general his ratings, I mean, they might mean something. Of course, it is very specific to him and specific to what he already knows, probably, and what his experiences are and so on and so forth and him as a person. But still, um, it might mean something. Best philosophy of loving relationships I have ever found. Like meditation teaches you that mood pass, this experienced marriage counselor says this applies to relationship communication as well. When angry or insecure, don't vent, don't share that. Let's the feeling pass. Your anger doesn't reveal some real truth. Everyone in a romantic relationship should read this. And here I am. Since I am in a romantic relationship, uh, maybe there's something good to me, even though... I think that we're already doing quite well, to be honest. The reason they seek so much, so much excitement is that excitement is not very satisfying. Which makes sense. I mean, I don't, well, I don't think very satisfying, um, but well, hmm, it is not very satisfying. So it is satisfying to some degree, but not that much, so which leads to us needing quite a bit of it. So actually quite a lot of it. So maybe, just maybe, um, we're searching more excitement, the thrill, because of that, you know, because we um, do not get that much out of it. The opposite of disagreeing is understanding. I think understanding and I mean, it's basically empathy, isn't it? Um, Empathy and, and being able to understand somebody is a crucial skill, a crucial, well, I would actually say it is a hard skill. Um, since soft skills are always, you know, being talked down that much, I think they matter quite a bunch. I think they should not be overlooked. And when it, I mean, when it comes to hiring, I guess this is still something that people are doing. I mean, I would assume, can you actually see what I'm seeing? Um, and I cannot, can I do this? Well, anyway, um, I think that when you're hiring somebody and especially when it is a position in which this person has to deal with people in, it makes really sense, you know, to, to think about empathy and think about human skills. And I would assume that, um, a good set of human skills and being good at dealing with other people is um, a great way also to excel your career and um, well I would argue also to be happier I mean if people like you and a lot of people like you 
I would feel better about myself compared to um, nobody likes me and everyone quite hates me. So it um, just does make sense, I'd say. Let's let's actually pick the one that I that I see or that you as well see. A focus on problems is the number one relationship killer. It lowers your spirits and makes things look worse than they really are. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is, when you've been in a relationship for, I don't know, let's, let's actually also say a few months, it still says something. I mean, <laughs> it might say something good about the relationship or it might be say, saying something good about you as a person, you know, you trying to uh, get things right trying to and or the other person trying to kind of work that out even though maybe it clearly won't ever be uh fine or it won't ever be uh correct or it won't ever work out but still um i think um definitely and this is something that we could all apply to life basically always focusing on the things that we're not having always focusing on the things that um, we lack that we would like to have always the problems um yeah, I mean, it is not good, is it? Um, focus on the good things sometimes and or at least realize when you're being too, you know, maybe too negative, when you're being too um, too focused on uh, on the downsides. There are many upsides and there are many upsides we could, could also, I want to underline could, um, think about keep in mind we could think of but it is difficult it really is i mean uh if it was so easy we would all have six pack apps and um be really rich and and whatever um <laughs> if it was only about you know talking to ourselves in a, in a in a good way or positively or if it was just only about reading books and so on and so forth i mean there are, <laughs> there are many examples for that um Don't deal with problems, transcend them. To help mates to change, you must totally accept them as they are. Change of heart is the mechanism for saving and improving relationships. A change of heart by one party, however slight, is usually enough to create a positive spiral in the evolution of your relationship. Once you drop your ill will, your mate will feel more secure and will be likely to correct the conditions that concern you. Dissatisfaction is a thought process that brings unhappiness. The alternative to worry and dissatisfaction is enjoyment. We can use the mind to enjoy life or we can use it to judge, analyze and compare what we see. Which is basically the same thing as before. Um, um, keeping in mind, thinking about positives and or just i mean realizing as i said before realizing that we can do either or we can realize and focus on the good we can also realize and focus on the bad so you choose um the thing is and it is very interesting indeed why we're still having so many behaviors so many different sets of behaviors that um that are negative you know and that are not really serving as well why are we having that the problem is and also according to other people for example andrew huberman um that those sets of behaviors they were not made for 2022 nor 2023 nor 2020 um these are sets of behaviors that have been incorporated into our biology for um past times where they would have made sense i mean uh, binge eating for example i mean having more food is probably a very good idea when you think about the fact that food might not be available all the time um, or focusing on a bad, you know, mitigating the risks, mitigating the chance that you're gonna fucking die. At this point in time, we're not that likely to die on a daily basis. So, uh, you know, things do not change that quickly, apparently, and um, we proactively have to work on that.
once you drop your ill will, dissatisfaction is a thought process that brings unhappiness. The alternative to worry and dissatisf dissatisfaction is enjoyment. We can use the mind to enjoy life or we can use it to judge, analyze, and I've already read that. <laughs> This satisfaction had never been a big part of his employee's reality before he began offering with whole sessions. Of course, his employees had 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 occasional grips, but had dismissed them because they liked the jobs and wanted to get on with their work. When John introduced the idea of this satisfaction to the group, his employees began to look for trouble. As time went on, they thought more and more about this satisfaction and less and less about their work. Now they shared. Uh, the satisfaction mindset. Um, oh, yes, I can think about things and I can talk about things. Just because I'm thinking about something doesn't mean that I also have to talk about that. Just because I um, I have something in my mind, something is, um, you know, concerning me, something is just, you know, really dominant and or prominent in my head, doesn't mean that I have to talk about it. Um, especially when it is something negative. I think when it is something good, so a compliment or um, or anything else that, that can be useful for somebody else, I'd assume that it is great to say it. And people would love to hear that. Even if it's just, I don't know, I mean, you're looking good today when you really think about it and when you're having it in your mind. I think it is a very easy way to make your your world better and somebody else's as well but i think i don't know how, how big the circle is like me metaphor metaphorically speaking but yeah mindsets are self-validating for example suspicious people look for signs of betrayal and find it everywhere yes what we are searching for is probably also what we're gonna find people easily see their own good intentions but have difficulty seeing the good intentions of others well i don't know i don't know I don't know about that. I, 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 I mean, I think it also depends on who you are as a person. If you're seeing the good in people or if you're seeing the bad in people or if you're seeing the good intentions slash bad intentions. But I don't, I don't think that, you know, people are inherently bad or some shit. That's definitely not the case. I mean, there are some really fucking good people and uh, one should therefore really be even more happy about this fact because um we're having good people and it unfortunately is not the norm it should not be taken for granted because it is not norm it is not normally it is not what um things are always like you know there are a lot of shitty people but of course when i'm only focusing on the shitty people um I can, well, I'm, I'm only just going to see them, you know, because I literally physically do not see anything else. And I just thought about the whole thing with nice guys finish last, you know, because of the whole, okay, I'm thinking about bad people and, you know, just not thinking about the good ones. So is it really the case that good guys finish last? Um, you know, maybe there are some studies on that. I don't know. But, uh, and, and some pseudo experts on that, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't say so. Of course, when I'm focusing on it, then I, um, I will just see that, and only that. But I think also realizing that and recognizing that is a really cool thing, because you'll see that you know maybe you're biased in one or the other way. Maybe you're seeing things in in a distorted way, you know, those cognitive distortions that I've been talking about for quite a bit in the past few years. Um, so think, uh, well, there's an entire episode by myself about questions and asking questions. Ask more questions. I think asking more questions regarding everything and anything is a very good idea. You'll probably gonna find out a lot of things you're probably gonna find out um, very interesting things about yourself about the world about many many uh, many different aspects of life and what I've 
also, and it, you know, it might sound really dumb, but what I've also discovered very recently is more inputs, sometimes depends on the input, can really be beneficial. I am with my girlfriend watching a show at the time and I really do enjoy it. And it kind of, it is, it, it is so interesting to me. Um, I, well, I don't want to say it's inspiring because it would be a lot bit, mm. <laughs> um, I mean, when it is about murder and stuff, you know, it's definitely not inspiring, but it is interesting to see. And, um, um, the, the whole story besides the whole murdering shit. So it's you, by the way, if you know you, you might know what I'm talking about, but the whole story and the whole, um, how things are, are, are moving on, how the whole, you know, relationship, well, very meta talking about a relationship book and uh, the relationship uh, series. Um, it is really interesting and it is so cliche, but, but yet I, I see my past self and, and also how I have been, been dealing with things and how I have had to deal with things and um, what I did, what I didn't do and, and whatever. I'm um, very interesting you know, really, really interesting. And I thought and found that quite astonishing as well, again, as dumb it is, as it might sound. Um, I find that interesting that through those inputs, one can gain insights. And this led me to thinking, well, nonfiction books can be incredibly useful because I, to be honest, I never quite thought they can be besides, of course, uh, rest and just enjoying your life and enjoying the book. But um, I mean, people, I think like Bill Gates, for example, they also pointed out that they learn quite a lot from non-fictional books. But well, it, it really depends on the story then and, and, and heavily on the story. But I would also argue that probably you'll remember those things a bit better than quite any, any uh, non-fictional book. But yeah, anyway. Fiction versus non-fiction. Um, I'm hopefully going to see the next time. So, bye-bye, I guess. <laughs>